Hey guys, Gamer Zach here and welcome to my top 10 PC FPS games to watch in 2016. Now, first person shooters can be so much more than shooty shooty bang bang, but getting that right is still the essence of the genre. Well, it's time you lock and load and take aim at these upcoming titles. First up, we've got Consortium The Tower Prophecy by Interdimensional Games Inc. A sequel to the story-driven FPS set in 2042, the Tower Prophecy takes place on a massive skyscraper in the heart of London. You'll have the choice of sticking to the mission or exploring to uncover mysteries, along with the ability to fight, sneak, or talk your way through things. The dialogue system is one of the main selling points and it's been stated that it's kind of like a cross between Die Hard and the original Deus Ex. It seems like an interesting take on FPS and worth keeping an eye on. But a Kickstarter campaign is in the works, so we'll see how that goes. Then we have Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 by CI Games. Here we have a modern day first person tactical shooter. You play a retired marine attempting to prevent another cold war, but you share a dark past with your target. The first game in the series to feature an open world, gameplay revolves around three core elements, execute, target, and survive. Choose a stealthy approach or run and gun your way in. Take advantage of the environment, modify your weapons, and the game won't have a big arrow on the map telling you who to shoot, so get your intel gathering skills ready. Next we have Squad by Offworld Industries. This is a standalone game based on the award-winning Battlefield 2 mod Project Reality. It's a tactical FPS built around teamwork and cooperation, utilizing Unreal Engine 4. Combined arms, a resupply system, and 100-player servers sounds good. The game seems to have public support, with a successful Kickstarter campaign raising more than double their goal, and it's been greenlit on Steam. However, they state to fully realize the project, they would need $3 million. We'll have to wait and see how many promises they can fulfill. And then we've got Descent Underground by Descendant Studios. A prequel to 1994's Descent, this first-person shoot-em-up was successfully funded on Kickstarter, just hitting their goal of $600,000. Six Degrees of Freedom is the one that sets this apart, and its multiplayer fast-paced combat in 3D labyrinths could be fun. Revivals always rely a bit on nostalgia, but we can hope that this advances the game while staying true to the core experience that everyone is hoping for. Next up we have Rising Storm 2 Vietnam by Tripwire Interactive and Antimatter Games. A military shooter taking place during the Vietnam War, not too much is known right now, but I think it's safe to assume it's going to be much like its predecessor, asymmetrical gameplay between factions utilizing your environment and booby traps. Gameplay could be very interesting considering the vast differences in arms for each faction, so keep an eye on this one if you're looking for a promising military FPS. Next we have Titanfall 2 by Respawn Entertainment. Not much is known about the sequel to the multiplayer-only wall-running mech FPS, and it wasn't at 2015's E3 either. Titanfall made some big waves, but many feel like it didn't live up to expectations. Buzz for the game faded relatively quickly after the launch of the first title, despite the massive hype beforehand, and of course there are a lot of big questions for the sequel. We'll have to wait and see if Respawn will manage to advance the game and improve upon their formula. Then we have Space Hulk Deathwing by Strayomon Studio and Cyanide. Jumping into the Warhammer 40k universe, not a lot has been revealed about this title. You face off with the Gene Stealers in the small spaces of a Space Hulk, and I'm sure it's meant to have everything we would want from a 40k FPS. It's been in the works for a few years now, but all we've seen is a few trailers. It's hard to say if gameplay will be able to live up to all the hype, but if it doesn't, I'm sure a lot of people would be very upset, and it would be deemed heretical. Then we have Shadow Warrior 2 by Flying Wild Hog. The sequel to 2013's reboot of Shadow Warrior, we're now five years after the events of the last game. You play a modern ninja warrior fighting armies of demons from another dimension. This time, the world is more open with more traversal mechanics such as wall climbing and double jumping. Fight with blades and bullets by yourself or an up to four player co-op in procedural environments. The world is looking vibrant and the combat fast paced, so you can look forward to some exciting over the top violence. And then we have Doom 4 by id Software. 
As an icon in FPS, we have been watching the new Doom for a couple years now, but it's been rebooted again. Dev stated that the game they were working on didn't feel Doom enough, and a lot of things got shifted around. Badass demons, BFGs, and fast movement, we've seen some gameplay, and the willingness to start over to make it more Doom-like does give confidence that they want to get this right. Let's just hope that the footage we've seen isn't some sort of vertical slice. Finally, we have Unreal Tournament by Epic Games. A new addition to the Unreal universe is always exciting, but they have to get this right. Running on Unreal Engine 4, the development of the game is in collaboration with the community. The game is actually open source, and sharing ideas is encouraged. As much of the work is done by the community, the game will be free with no microtransactions. However, creating a marketplace for modders and content creators is planned, where earnings would be shared. Is this the perfect harmony between developer and community, or would it be a case of too many cooks? Either way, the pre-alpha is available for free until the end of October 2015, so go ahead and try it out, unless it's the future, in which case you should just check their website. Now, most of these games should be releasing in 2016, but either way, you should keep an eye on developments to see if these games will run and gun their way to the top or get picked off just short of their targets. And to wrap up, here's something I'd like to know. Do you think there's been an oversaturation of first-person shooters, or has it been rather balanced with other genres? Your perspective might be able to shed some light on the topic. Alright, that wraps up my top 10 PC FPS games to watch in 2016. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, drop me a like or share it with your friends. The support is always appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.